standing at the corner of Mason Avenue and Center with our captain of the police department, Captain Lee. We're here today because code enforcement is doing something I think is quite unique. It's called a code walk, and you're going to find out what a code walk is right now. Captain, thanks for being on uh, the program today. Uh, so under your leadership, code enforcement now has this new initiative that you're doing. And so talk a little bit about how, um, how this initiative happened. Code enforcement is now under the police department and what it is that you're trying to accomplish with the code walk. Yes, thank you for coming out, first of all, and joining us today. Um, so code enforcement moved under the police department a, a couple months back. And um, as part of that process, um, we implemented some new programs to, to create some transparency with the public so they could see what code enforcement was really out here doing in the their neighborhoods um, and to give some accountability to the process that they're going through each day. Um, some ways that we can follow up on what th things are being accomplished and what things aren't being accomplished so that we can try to improve the process in the background. Um, so a couple of those programs, the first one is we created CodeStat, um, which was a, a meeting we had earlier. It's a monthly meeting that, that um, we have where the public can come in and ask questions. They can see our accountability process of how we go through our, our uh, code complaints and how we address them. They can find out and educate themselves about the entire process. The second thing that we that we implemented was something that I, I just picked the term code walk and it was based off of a, a walk that we had done in another part of the city and I thought this is a great thing to do and we had interacted with some of the public in that area and they got to ask questions and learn what we were out there doing so I thought why don't we do this regularly. Um, so we, we created this project called Code Walks. We do currently we've been doing it two times a month. Um, and, the, and the idea is that we come out to an area within the city and we focus on that area and the code inspectors come into that area and help that code officer that works that area normally accomplish addressing those properties in that, in that small area that we're impacting that day. Um, and at the same time, the public's invited to come with us and they get paired up with a code officer or our lead inspector and they get to ask questions and they get to find out about what the code officers are doing um, and they help us to identify problems that are, that, are, that are in the area. But also we get to explain to them sometimes why things that the public might see as a code issue isn't really a code issue. Um, and uh, we get to be able to educate them a little bit on the back end about certain things of how to report or where to report other things that are occurring in their area. Well, that's excellent because one of the things that you're going to do today walking south of Mason from where we're standing is going through the community, kind of observing, looking at things that may be in violation, may not be in violation. And I think the public sometimes may have a misconception about code enforcement, that you're there to just pounce on people uh, when you see something in the community. But that's not really what code enforcement is about. It's about trying to keep our community sometimes safe, having issues that may be uh, uh, safety issues, nuisance properties. So talk a little bit about the fact that code enforcement is not there to uh, just go out and kind of just find something at random. But what is your real purpose? Yeah, our real purpose is to maintain the property values of our citizens within the community. And we want to do that through compliance. So our, especially on these code walks, our first approach is to contact people, talk to them about the problem. Maybe they don't even see it as a problem or we're unaware. Maybe they're uh, uh, an owner of a property that's not at that property every single day day they live outside of the city or another area in the city um, and we want to just educate them about the issue that's going on first and have them come into compliance voluntarily and that's really what we hope for um, and we usually try to give a friendly conversation or notice on the front end to say hey just correct this problem in a certain in a reasonable amount of time and and there's nothing there's no uh, there's no repercussions no fine nothing like that um, if it proceeds or it persists beyond that then of course we have a process that we employ that we that we work through. We issue a notice of violation and a lot of times we even get compliance at that point which is great because there's no fine in place at that point either. So um, getting getting something, getting compliance is really the overall goal. Whether it happens at the very beginning or when that notice is issued, it doesn't really matter to us as long as we get compliance before somebody gets a fine because then it just drags out and drags out and it's bad for both sides. It's bad for the community because it's a, a blighted issue or an issue that's occurring in the, prop, uh, the neighborhood that stays there while working through that process and it and it's bad for the the property owner because there's a fine that gets attached to it ultimately they're responsible for and we really don't want people to have to pay fines we want them to just just to fix the, the small things that need to be fixed along the way. 